after those two presentations, actually, I would like to change mine. It's not possible uh, on short notice. Um, so because actually it's about what I've heard about the connectivity of people information. And um, now I try to blend my, my presentation into, into the previous ones. And um, another difference is that previous speakers were from the public area. I'm uh, from the private sector of a, larger, a large construction company. But I'm going to speak as a representative of my company, Züblin, and uh, also a little bit personal, because it was mentioned in the movie previously that um, Stuttgart has a... Um, you may have heard of Stuttgart before. Stuttgart is known for a bad Premier League football club. And uh, then there's also Porsche is being built there. Mercedes is the hometown Mercedes. Bosch started his business there. It's a major supplier for the car industry. And now recently has gotten into the headlines with a train hub. And actually it's an interesting story because it's somewhat unexpected. And I would like to present to you lessons learned before something actually happened. What's the situation? Well, this is nothing new to you. I just wanted to frame the, my talk. Um, the, the city's population is increasing worldwide. This is no, new, no big news. By, 20, by 2030, I guess, 60% uh, of the entire world population is going to be in the cities, major cities. So if I, if I show you the changes, so we have here the, uh, a map from 2011, major city populations and how it's going to change. You also see where it's going to happen. Yeah, also, for, probably for this, um, for this uh, audience, is nothing new. So we have heard before what Amsterdam has been doing, what, uh, what Mr. Caffeine has been saying, what needs to be done. And I would like to speak a little bit about what the infrastructure part is. And I'm going to zoom in now into Europe. Somewhere in the middle is Stuttgart. That's actually... Have, has, who knows? Who has been to Stuttgart? Two, three persons. It's impressive. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being there once. So when we zoom in, and actually the interesting thing is, everybody is saying um, traffic is increasing because traffic, traffic is increasing dramatically, and we need to transport more people, more goods. And the interesting thing is we build stronger, faster, more um, pot uh, potent um, lifelines, and actually we're moving like 500 years ago, speed-wise, very often. And why is that? And what, what, what does effect does it have in economically also? So they are European measures. This is a very male expression of the German-French friendship, but it's good. From Stuttgart, you can be in 20, three hours, 20 minutes at Charles in, um, in Gare, de, Gare de l'Est, and you can't beat this with the train, uh, with the plane, I'm sorry. So we're moving together. And um, as said before, from Paris to Bratislava. And actually, the interesting thing is, uh, in the, right in the middle, you have Stuttgart, and it's a major boo-ha-ha -ha in Stuttgart about this train station. I will show you a little bit about that. So it's on the axis, Paris, Bratislava. It's a section. And why are we trying to do this? Saving time. We need to... This is in German, but you can imagine from Cologne to Stuttgart, it used to be a, a, quite a long time. Now from Cologne to Stuttgart, you can be there in two hours. And from Cologne to Munich, um, you, you want to reduce it by approximately one hour. This is the official target. Um, Johan van Dijk, I just mentioned before, um, I'm also involved in the um, CTP. And actually, why would a construction company talk about this topic? So um, we are involved in Refine, of course, we want to make business, that's clear, but we do also research on that topic. Now, about Stuttgart. Maybe you have been, the few who, has, who have been to Stuttgart, we have a train station operating since uh, 1927. It's actually a nice building. You see to the top left, the main, the main building is still um, available. 
It's a cool de sac design uh, with lots of tracks, and half of the tracks are not being used anymore. Stuttgart is in the valley. Real estate is extremely expensive. After Munich, the second most expensive town in real estate uh, in, in uh, Germany. And this is an issue which you would uh, address before. It's a major issue. It's hardly affordable for normal people anymore into the area. It's a very small area. So in, right in the smack in the middle, there's a huge area which now, 20 years ago, some people thought, wow, that's a great idea if we could feed. I don't have a pointer, but you can imagine. You see the track system? Let me see this. All this. So all the tracks. Here's the train station. And this is right in the middle. Yeah. Oh, you do have a pointer. Thank you very much. So, this is the train station right in the middle. It's hilly, hillside country. And you have this, I think, 500 hectares right in the middle of the city. And then the, they had the idea to move it underground, turn it uh, also uh, turn it 90 degrees, that's for logistic reasons, but you would free all this up. And who would not think that if we have to uh, renovate a major train station, wouldn't it be a great idea to uh, create housing or uh, um, space to improve the quality of the city? So this is how it should look. Opening date is 20 December. They already said the date. Uh, there's already a sched train schedule December 21st. 2019 or something, I don't know. So that's how it looks right now. This is from the park entrance. This is the building you saw before. This is the main building. This the, the main old building should be kept, the hall. It's also under heritage, cultural heritage, heritage protection. And um, this is the underground. So this is how, just a few visualizations. So that's what a great idea. Everybody, actually everybody agreed this is a great idea. But what happened then? So I, I, I made the point, these are the plans, how to, uh, what to do with the free space. A new, actually, entire new quartier could be uh, developed. Parks, that was the idea. This is how it looks today. The tracks feeding the train station, and this is how it could look. Yeah. But then what happened? People were against it. For Five, six years now, there's a tremendous uproar, upheaval against this project. Too costly. This, the time schedule, uh, uh, time schedule is not being kept. Uh, Stuttgart has, probably nobody knows that, after Budapest is the second largest uh, uh, mineral, spr spring, mineral springs in uh, Europe. So they're dragging all kinds of uh, arguments to, to avoid the project. What happened? <clears throat> is it unexpected? And uh, what we see is the people are not being included. This is what the previous speaker, the first speaker said. Uh, we have to include the population. They don't trust us anymore. Yeah? Significant cost of overrun for all mega projects. I mean, there's no mega project anymore, actually, worldwide, which has not significant cost overrun and a major delay. Uh, and Un, um, probably um, mediocre people running the uh, running the show. Our airport in Berlin is, is a good example too. I mean, what an embarrassment for our capital. Then you have um, the, cur the 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 risks are unevenly shared. The people feel they don't the the risks are not evenly shared between the promoters, the politicians, and the population. So there's no trust for that. And then comes stuff like with the money. The people don't take the real numbers. They don't say them, or they don't even admit or there's a viability to why, could, uh, why wrong numbers would be used. So you have here the cost estimates from different sources for this project. Blue, I don't look at the numbers. It's always everything. Is, the unit is billions, of course, euros. And you have blue for different years. Then you have bus risk buffers, and if, if they estimated them, what, what it shows is, it's amazing, you have a huge project, actually everybody shouldn't be involved, and nobody can put a price, a price tag on it. And between, I mean, of course there's a development. Yeah, I mean, we're talking here about uh, more, almost 30 years, but there's this insecurity in the population. So that's the, that's the political issue. Now I would like to speak um, about what happened at the train station. 
Now, um, well, our travel doesn't stop there. And how do we continue? And it used to be that usually it's public transportation in our train station so far. But also, right now, the intermodality has more than ever before I, um, a business model. And what uh, it was mentioned also before, one reason is the IT development and um, information communication technology that allows for um, new business models. We arrive at the train station. We, usually we would continue. Now more and more individual cars, uh, conventional cars can be rented right there. But now it's about the individual connectivity. Small cars, electric uh, drives, for example, this is being popular, very popular. And we've seen this before also in Amsterdam, of course. Um, bikes, e-bikes. But the, in, the change is into indi individual mobility right from the train hub. It didn't used to be like that. And that's possible because of things like that. You can buy a ticket anywhere. You don't need to go to the ticket counter anymore. Uh, how many people, I mean, probably you also travel with a, a smartphone. And interesting enough, this is a movable an app developed by the Daimler group. And this shows you now the options. Wherever you are, you can go, and it shows you the options of your connectivity. Uh, if you walk, even the walking, how much time do you need if you want to get? Verbindung means uh, connections. So do you use the, the local trains, rental cars, walk, whatever? So you have the information, any information through ICT and Internet, of course, you have the available, readily available for you how to continue. That is, new. That is rather new on a large scale. But now, what, do we do, what else do we have to do? We have to face the, the infrastructures as they are, and how do we use them more efficiently? So we have to optimize existing infrastructure. We cannot change everything. So these are models for, for the US. Yeah? How can we use, be reliable in delivering people and time, and reduce energy and um, energy consumption and CO2 emissions? Another aspect is the infrastructure becomes smart. Re conventional infrastructure becomes smart. Yeah? You have, for example, in, that, in Holland, there's a project, a pilot project, where there's paint on the street, and the paint changes colors if it's becoming turning into freezing state. So you can now, because of technology, the gentleman, the first speaker, said it also, it's a, the, the, the technology is available, um, you can readily, individually inform people on, with changing time. You don't have the science here. So you have various, you have the um, safety, Autonomous driving is coming up. I mean, this will take a while, but you can be sure it's probably safer than having individual driving. Also, information on, um, on uh, intersections. This is all uh, geared towards um, safety. Why, why does a construction company deal with that? Because it's about con it's the, the bottom line is connectivity. And I would like to show you schematically how we understand or what's the state of construction today from a construction company and what it may look to, uh, tomorrow. So what you hear here is the life cycle. So we have to extract resources. That's all, new, that's all uh, known to you. We have to process the resources. We have to pro uh, manufacture products. The product that we manufacture are buildings, bridges, tunnel, roads. And there are different aspects to those life cycles. And then we have disposal of the material. We have to maintain our projects. A bridge, a tunnel has to be maintained as well as a building. We have to dismantle it. So this is how we approach it. It didn't used to be like this. We only saw one aspect. We delivered, the client asked us something to do. And each building now has different, different aspects we have to worry about. This has always been security, comfort, information and communication, health. Those are the red and the colored dots, the electrical engineering. And each, each life cycle has, um, um, uses energy and emissions. This is nothing new, but just summarizing how... Um, so this is now a little bit uh, fast forward. But this is how construction may be tomorrow, or will be tomorrow. Same life cycle. We have to regard, from the beginning, the entire life cycle. When we design a building, and this is calling the architects, 
everybody has to be included, also the contractor or the user possibly. And not only the individual products are connected in, in, in each other, they are connected to each to totally different products. Buildings will be connected to roads, to tunnels, safety, energy. Yeah. Very, when we talk about smart city, what um, uh, Mr. Fahal said before, this is what it looks like on a scheme. And then we have, to, we have to, as a construction company or a major construction company, we're trying to see that ahead of time. And this is how it might look then in, really, uh, in reality. This is, might be a little bit uh, Sixth Sense, looking like the Sixth Sense movie. Uh, but we're doing this already. And what, what the big difference is that now roads will be not just infrastructure for transport, they will be for information, for disposal, for energy. That will, they will, be, they could will connect the city entirely on the various levels. I would like to conclude. What, what does it mean now if we look at construction or the built environment from the, contra from, from the building view? The approval system, does it suffice today? Can it handle the approval system, which might be decades old or older? Can it handle the complexity? Yeah. Um, the permit processes. One, pro one problem at Stuttgart was the permit processes. They changed, but they were always obsolete because, for example, now what, what they approved in Stuttgart was an energy concept which is 20 years old. I mean, you know that what the energy situation looked like and the technology looked like 20 years ago. How can it be that then they still want to carry out a project according to those plans? The awarding process has to be changed. The regulations, now here in this environment in Brussels, it was said Brussels is the capital of Europe, um, the regulations have, be, have to be harmonized if you want to connect the countries to each other. And this is a big topic. The participation of the citizens has a totally different um, um, lever now than it used to have, and cost, of course. And I would like to end by quoting this book by Mega Project and Risk. This is uh, by, uh, I think it's a Danish professor. He's now at Oxford. He wrote that book. I would like to quote, if you allow to me, just uh, finishing up. Um, it's called about the mega projects, um, the mega project paradox. Allow me to read off. I, I can't memorize all that. It's not much. But it's interesting about mega project, which is linking it to the Stuttgart 21. This is how S21, the Stuttgart 21 uh, hub. Um, he analyzed all mega projects of the past decades worldwide and comes to the conclusion that all projects have strikingly poor performance records in terms of economy, environment, and public support. And, and he says that um, all the analysis done before, they're being, I mean, cost-benefit analysis, financial analysis, environment, they're not being believed anymore by the people. As part of the mega-project preparation, they're called into question, criticized and denounced more often and more dramatically than analysis in any other professional field or no. There are no honest numbers anymore. And whether we like it or not, mega-projects development are currently a field where little can be trusted. And then in the world of mega-project preparation, and implementation is a highly risky one where things happen only with a certain probability and rarely turn out as originally intended. And what, what, uh, how does he conclude? Or well, I would like to finish. And one of the major conclusions he draws, quoting many people, sociologists also from his field, says, we hold that risk assessment and management should involve citizens and stakeholders much more to involve pro the, the public properly into the decision making. Yeah. Well, and if you ever go, if you ever go to Stuttgart, it's not about this. Only 100 meters from the uh, train station um, construction site is this opera house, and the opera house is the opera is known, and the ballet is world famous. So it's maybe not as famous as the Paris Opera, but it's worth a city. Uh, it's worth a visit. Thank you very much for your interest.